That seems like such a long time ago but you, that you came on the show and, and opened up so beautifully to us. I think it's gone really quickly. I can't believe it's been a year. Mm. But um, it has been a crazy year, good years, a lot of good mm. things are happening. Good. So, um, yeah, it's all positive and good from my side. You've, you've written a book called Just a Child, and I don't know if you've, you've seen this at all. It's a very harrowing photograph, very harrowing image. And what, what struck me when I read it, first of all, was you're just a normal girl. Yeah. You're just a normal girl that got sort of out, out of your depth, things that have got out, out of hand, um, which we'll go into in, in a little while. But I wanted to ask you, did you find it a therapeutic experience to write it all down? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was really, really difficult, though. Um, I didn't realise just how difficult it would be. Because yeah. um, I've always done a lot of interviews, I've always been quite yeah. open about it, but I've never really challenged, you know, my deep thoughts and feelings, which for the book, I yeah. had to do that. But, yeah, it was like therapy for me. So so you did, you did go have a little bit of therapy, didn't you, originally? Yes. But, and you didn't feel it helped you? I think it did. I, I only had a few sessions, but for me, because I was so public and I've always spoken yeah. out from, you know, the beginning, mm. that for me was yeah. like therapy. Um, and as well, not only was it helping me, but I know it was helping other people as well. Mm. Yeah. So for me, that was just, you know, the, the right way to do it. I mean, yeah. it, did, it was quite harrowing for you, wasn't it? I mean, you did physically kind of break down and yeah. you had a ghostwriter, but yeah. normally the pattern would be that you you talk to each other, but yeah. you got to a point where you couldn't do that. Yeah, me and Rachel, we uh, we met a lot, so we'd you know try and talk. But when it got to the you know the really deep bits, um, we'd have to kind of just do it through emailing and, and writing back and forth. Because I remember being in my bedroom and I kind of just dropped to the floor and I, I was crying, mm. um, and I kind of just you know curled in a ball really because. Mm. To write the book, I had to put myself back there yeah, because I wanted the reader to be on that journey with me. So mentally, you know, I was back to being a 14-year-old girl again. And what was really difficult is it, I'm a mum. So, you know, I'd be in my bedroom writing it and then, you know, one of my boys had shouted, sure. say, what are we having for tea? Yeah. So, um, yeah, then you have to switch off and put on that brave face as, as a yeah. mum. Sammy, one of the things that I think is fascinating about your story, and I think for viewers at home, they'll have teenage daughters and it is absolutely normal for a teenage girl to want to dress mm -hmm. up, to want to kind of get some attention um, and, and, you know, be out with your mates because it's kind of that growing up time, isn't it? But you didn't realise that what was happening to you was being... that you were being groomed. Yeah. And you were headstrong. You had a lovely family. You didn't come from, a, you know, a broken family or anything. Yeah. You've written this book and hopefully people will buy it, mothers will buy it, yeah. you know, because I don't think people realise that their ch daughters, you know, might be being groomed. Yeah. What would you say to people out there who may, who may be in that situation, how do you know that you are being groomed? Um, I think it's really difficult to say, and I always say that grooming is the most perfect crime because it happens without you realising mm. it's happening, mm. and it's fun as well. Mm. Um, and what my abuser did was give me a different kind of attention to my parents. I got lots of attention, you know, from my family. It's different. It made me feel very grown up. Um, That's you know, exactly I was paying compliments. how I felt, and I was 14 as well. Yeah. When I had a similar thing, I wasn't groomed, but I was. Mm -hmm. um, I was, was on a holiday with spell. my parents. Yeah. It was over, yeah. Yes, on a, on a holiday. Mm -hmm. And I got taken out. And my idea was all the romance and yeah. things, because he looked like Heathcliff. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to be Cathy, and I wanted that, that romantic kiss and things. Yeah. And he took me out, and, and when he dropped me back off, we went down a side road, and then he started to attack me. And I managed to get out of that situation, I wasn't thinking sex. Yeah. I was 14, mm. and it was the romance. Mm. Yeah. But the so it was completely different. Yeah. But if, I was going to say, the difference also is that you sort of wanted to be in that relationship at the time because you didn't yeah. realise what was happening to you. Yeah. And I did also want to point out your parents did realise, didn't they? Because yeah. they constantly went to the authorities and got yeah. let down. If anybody's watching this now thinking, that is possibly happening to my child. Do you, what, what response 
Do you think they would now get from the authorities all these years later? I do think things have improved from the authorities. Um, in fact, in the last few years, um, especially, we have come such a long way for, for professionals, but there is still um, such a lot to do. And when I started the book, I wanted to raise awareness and what it's kind of ended up as yeah. is uh, giving a better understanding to grooming. I think that we still don't understand it properly. Um, people seem to be a CSE victim. You're a little white girl from a, a, a care home. Um, you know, you get fed drink and drugs and you sold. My story is very different to that, so that's why it's important to hear lots of different stories. But, um, yeah. You say you, you, you wish you'd listen to your parents more. Yeah. <laughs> but they probably tried to get through to you. Mine did, you know, when I was yeah. going off the rails as a punk rocker and all sorts. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to them. I was a rebellious teenager. Yeah. So it's... how can they get through? How can, how can you actually make a parent get through to a rebellious child? I think it's about keeping that communication open. Um, you know, don't shout, don't, you know, kind of just mm -hmm. always make sure that your child knows that you're there no matter what and that they can be open and sure. talk to you about things. And as a parent... <laughs> um, um, was, it having, was it having children of your own that suddenly the light bulb went on and you thought, oh, my God, I now see what my parents went through. Yeah, I had no idea, you know, what my parents were going through. And at times, I actually blamed them. Mm. Um, so, yeah, now, you know, I've got two boys. My oldest is 16. So, uh, you know, some of the things that, that he's done, and I think, oh, my God, just imagine what my parents went through.